give you all the praise. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Father. Glory to your holy name. Glory to your holy name. We give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. I want to have your seat comfortably. We're going to take it systematically this evening. And then we're going to be very precise, trusting the Holy Spirit to give us preciseness tonight. And wherever you are right now, I want to appeal to you to have a comfortable location where you can conveniently open your face when we are into praying. Hallelujah. If you want to start opening your face now, it's okay. But please relocate yourself in a very comfortable location where by you can pray together with us. Hallelujah. God will pass you by tonight. I say God will not pass you by tonight. This is not an optional service. This is a service that is deliberately saying goodbye to 2020 and welcoming a new year that no human being have ever spent. The year 2021. And so whatever it takes tonight to make you passionately cry to God, you want to engage that today. Today we want just to want to talk because we already know that the year coming is a year of repositioning. It is not a man. It is what I had in my ears. Hallelujah. I don't have any choice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And uh, because it's a year of repositioning, it's been told us since uh, Christmas Eve, right? If I'm correct. So I thought something will come up to change this, to confirm anything, but I, I couldn't get any other thing other than this repositioning. Hallelujah. And I began to connect things with things I discovered. This is actually very true. Right? I begin to connect with things. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, there are some things we want to look into tonight. What do we want to look into before we start knocking at God's door and forcing this gate open so that we can have a deep kiss with Him by all means? Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Okay. So let us now go boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly. Not not shame not shamefacedly not in, not with shyness boldly okay we're not going to wait till god knock at our door we are going to force the door open for him to enter are you listening to me you break your door come on have your seat oh, hallelujah and if god won't position himself in our door we're going to go to him wherever he is amen and enter his court by all means hallelujah tonight because I want to go to 2021 with all sense of purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, what I want to talk a little bit about is not a preaching, it's not admonition, it's whatever you can think it is, it is for you. All right. If you say this word is a word of prophecy, okay. If, the word, if, it, if, the, if you think it's a teaching, okay. If you think it's a preaching, good. But what is important is that I'm going to the Word of God to ensure that your heart is enlarged. Okay? All right? Managing your repositioning with God in 2021. There are some things you need to know in order to manage your repositioning. The problem is not God blessing people. The problem is people maintaining God's blessing. The problem is not God putting someone in position, right? So God can put people in position, but to maintain that position is a big deal, right? It's what? It's a big deal. And that's what God always has second thought about and ensure that everybody is well trained before he's put in a position. 
We see the case of David. We see the case of Joseph. We see several cases in the scripture where God had to get through to people through some rigorous encounters so that their mind will be best prepared for the placement that God wants to place them. Hallelujah. God doesn't just rise up and just put people like an abracadabra magician. Right? God doesn't do that. And in fact, I've told you, God is not a magician. Okay? God is an investor. Everybody say, God is an investor. God likes to invest where he knows that he's going to reap a reward. Okay? God is not going to go invest anyhow. All right? Now, the reason, is, the reason is this. Now, look at the, pro, the proverbial illustration he made in the New Testament. When he was talking about talent was given to one, talent was given to the another one, you know. You know, this one that was given the least talent did not profit in it. He went to go and hide it and sat down on it. And when the rewarder came, when the owner of the talent, who expect that the talent should have yielded fruits, and I was asking all of them, and this guy was giving complaints. Was giving a complaint that he was only given one, <laughs> one talent, and that's why he was not able to profit. So he wants to preserve the talent for the owner when he comes back. And see the judgment Jesus Christ said, the Lord pass across. The, the Lord passed a serious judgment, and the judgment was that the talent should be taken away from the one who has not, <laughs> who, has, who has not many, and be given to those who have many. Hallelujah. So God is an investor. Everybody say God is an investor. When God gives you a gift, he is mindful of the gift he gives you. Don't play around with it. All right? Don't play around with it. When God puts you in a position, he is mindful of the position he puts you. Don't play around with that. Right, I play around with that. You know, we sometimes we are tempted to think that God is just throwing things around. No, God, God does not just throw things around. All right, and of course, when He gives you something, all right, He gives you the sense of purpose, and He's not repentant about it because He does not repent of His giftings. That's why it takes His time to ensure that He trains you. So that you won't have any excuses not to be able to profit in that repositioning. Hallelujah. You know, God doesn't want to have all these things coming your way and standing and displacing you from the purpose for which you are created. So it will try as much as possible to get your heart reorganized. Amen. Everybody say reorganized. You know, it takes the question of the heart for the Israelites to say, oh, um, they forget about what God did in Egypt and they were complaining. God understood that, look, these people didn't really register their hearts with, with him. It was so bothered with all the encounter, with all the training, with all the miracles in the land of Egypt. The Israelites made a play of those who encountered and god was very angry you know what god did he destroyed all of them he did not allow them to inherit the promise he made god was not repent in his word one thing that can make god change his mind is when his glory is given to the other when a man start complaining and does not manage the gifting the encounter the testimony the repositioning when they are not properly managed to raise the praise of God, God can decide to replace that person with a younger fellow. He did that to Saul and replaced Saul with David. You know, we are told that Saul became another man. He was really heavily anointed, so heavily anointed. And we are told in the scripture, he became another person. When, a, when one, someone becomes another person, it means that you were completely, completely what transformed. Amen. The anointing came upon you that you were transformed. You are no longer yourself. That was the extent of the anointing that was placed on Saul. 
but God find it convenient to replace Saul with a younger man. <laughs> and he made that young man to be close to him such that <laughs> God is so so that the man <laughs> called Saul can be put into jealousy so when God wants to really replace it's not going to replace somebody very far away so that you so that you would even know who replace you it will replace somebody very close it's very there so that you can be put into jealousy and begin to realize what you have done hallelujah hallelujah amen. <laughs> amen. amen may god not replace us in jesus name may we not mismanage what god has put in our custody to manage in the precious name of jesus therefore the need tonight to remind us to get our heart stable be focused and know what we need to expect i need to position ourselves properly to manage that placement of God in 2021. Now some people will leave God's presence tonight. Mark, mark my word. In different gathering today. And not too far <laughs> from today. But three or four days. They will start saying something different. <laughs> the problem is not the anointing and the positioning. The problem is remaining focused. God told Israelites. They are going to be going to a land filled with honey and meek. But the problem was not God. The problem was those who were spoken to, who had it, who saw testimony, who saw evidences that God was going to do all these things, yet they still present themselves and talk to God as if God is their mate, as if God was not speaking at all. They made God to waste his word. They make God's word to fall to the ground. Because they look at these people. Even though I specially appointed you to be my begotten. I disown you. And God clear them out in the wilderness. Hey. Don't do something that will make us say. Ha, ha, have I wasted my word on this guy? This guy put paper. He wrote things down. Bye bye. And he wrote another thing. Pim, pim, pim. I said oh I received this. And he called my name. And he prayed to me. And now he's doubting me. Is it this guy is not worth doing business with business with god it is the truth the orientation of our heart is so important when i was very young as a small as a young christian very small small boy something came upon my heart and tell me divine mind bible church divine mind bible church i was like it's like god already told me what kind of message i'll be ministering right from childhood before he eventually appeared to me in my dream jesus christ himself appeared to me in my dream when i'm doing my phd in arizona state university and now today when i want to craft message the message will go, always going to go back to average condition of the heart <laughs> whatever message i minister is going to go back there amen so that the center of focus hallelujah and god has taken me through stuff to the extent that he trained my mind and trained me and train me uh every anything i say is always coming to pass <laughs> and that's why i'm very mindful of what i say hallelujah i'm very mindful and now you are standing here tonight and you are listening let me just tell you one simple thing every word that comes from this altar today is not a waste agree with yourself okay i'm not going to force it on you i'm just going to speak from the scripture agree with yourself that none of the word that is coming from this altar tonight you got to agree it's a matter of what of agreement with yourself none of it will fall to the ground that's a power in world and i'm telling you see the whole entire nation of the whole heart was created by word and you came to college because of word can't you understand people teach you by words are you listening to me some people will read and read and read computer say oh i'm tired i need somebody to speak they will go to youtube video somebody need to what speak there is a creativity in words damage the tongue of a man you damage his destiny damage the tongue of a man you damage his destiny you finish him 
Hallelujah. When a man fails to say the right thing at the right time, it's like short changing his own life for somebody else to take over. And that's what the devil is doing to us in our community. Many people have been quieted by Satan in the name of fear. Fear not to offend. It's a serious problem. And there is a tactic from the pit of hell to run down the brain of individuals. Okay, if you don't want to believe me, that's okay. But I'm going to speak by revelation. So, so, so this ministry is crafted to deliver you from that and be free. Amen. I mean, what? You need to be free. There are machinations. Machinations to speak lie, 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 and the lie now turn to be truth. Universally accepted. Whatever direction the Holy Ghost is leading me to now, I think I, put, I better allow him because the more I want to go here, the more he gives me some, some other things to say. Okay, I'm going to say something that will profit and benefit your life right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's so important to decide within ourselves. See, that what thing God can do for us, he, God cannot do a choice for us. Amen. God cannot do what? Hey! Everybody say hey! God cannot do a choice for us. We have to decide. Amen. If you have somebody who calls himself a pastor, a prophet, and he's deciding for people, okay, then you know for sure that something might be wrong <laughs> with such a pastor. That's how you know sometimes through pastors, through leaders of the, through ministers of the gospel. They don't force people. They speak the word and get out of it. See, you don't take responsibility of the gospel personal. You don't do that because you are going to dry out. You are going to dry out. Always learn on how to point people to the direction of God's word. The ministry will become simple. One of the problems we have in Africa, let me tell you, the Africa issue, we are so religious, but we, most of the time we are taking God's responsibility. And if God gives us revelation, we, we go ahead and speak the revelation in such a way that even the hearer will feel that we only revelation ourselves. We give, a, we give the revelation our own interpretation. And a person will not be thinking about pastor in his dream. <laughs> thinking about the man of God in his dream. He's all thinking about <laughs> the man of God. Rather than thinking about God. God must be the focus. If any revelation is given, not to make the minister celebrity, but to make God celebrated. Very important, man. Very important. So, you see, God is not weary in lifting, in repositioning. But the only concern he has with all of you here right now is that after you were well loaded with your belly full, what will you be doing next? <laughs> That's what he's afraid of. <laughs> when the belly of Satan was full in, <laughs> in heaven, he said, well, he now began to, to do divide and rule. He called some angel, call them together. Hey, hey, what do you think? It seems as if we know some secret here in heaven. Can we just make another kingdom and take over from this man? <laughs> Let me call God man right now. Illustration, right? And he said, okay. I was told in the book of Isaiah, he said he was going to exalt his own throne above the Lord. And he called some angel, right? The fallen angel to himself. And they took the steps. Hallelujah. Yeah. To take over. And God saw that it cast the devil out out of his presence. Out of the anger and frustration that that was what led the devil to go and tempt you know, if he want people to himself he's an evangel evangelist. <laughs> he's an a wicked evil evangelist. Right? He went to go and just gather. You see, as we're wandering around it will, it, will, it will turn what is right to evil. It will bring uh, fake into reality. It duplicates what God created. It do all kind of stuff. And then it went to, uh, you know, it went to Adam and Eve to paint issues. He said, ah, as God said, 
So they are tempted that they want to get more people to himself, followers. So one of the things, well, how you know a rebellious follower is that he always going to find his own party, gather his own party together that will be talking behind the leader. This are, that's how you know. That's are, these are the traits of Satan. But when, how do you know true follower? A true follower will never allow anybody to gossip about his leader. That is a loyal follower. Very important. It's from the beginning. That's the attitude of Satan trying to do all those kind of stuff. And he went to Adam and he said, if you can just do that, you will see that your eyes will be open. You will see. He tell them stories, in, the story of in one hand, he didn't tell them the consequences of opening the eyes to be able to see when God does not command that you see. See, when you see what you're not supposed to see, you begin to have doubt in your heart. It corrupted them. Corrupted them. God did not want the eyes of the guys to open and see their nakedness. Now that their eyes are open, they will now see the consequences of nakedness. They begin to see in a, their inadequacy. See, God does not look with the eyes of men. So, and the Lord was there somewhere. He said, I do not look as a man look. He said, God, men look into the appearance, but God looks into the heart. So the eyes of God is different. Also, the language of God is different. So this guy immediately translated from the glory of God the eyes for which God is seeing, they began to obtain the eyes of the devil. To see inadequacy in what God calls adequacy. So as you are going into 2021, there are some things people will begin to see around you and say, ah, what are you doing this? Why are you like this? Why are you different here? Ah, okay. Now, if you borrow their eyes to see what they are seeing, you will, you will be located again from your position and go to wrong position. You're going to have the eyes of God. The eyes of God may not be appreciated. May not be attracting the populace. The position God put you in this the coming year may not be well appreciated initially because God wants to plant you there. So people will not appreciate that initially. But eventually they're going to come to bow down as we read in the book of Isaiah chapter 60. They come and bow down on your knee. It's the sons of the foreigners. But initially, remember, initially, people will not appreciate the step we are going to be taking in 2021. Because what is highly esteemed among men, often, is abomination unto, unto God. What is highly esteemed among men, is abomination unto God. It's very important to know how to manage your repositioning. Very important than the repositioning itself. People stress so much about repositioning me, Lord. In this new year, Lord. Take my destiny high. But have you thought about God help me to manage the repositioning? People pray every year, every year. <laughs> and then after they try first, first month, second month, third month, they back again to where they came from. Because there was no energy to carry that, that placement. Those that wait upon the Lord shall have their strength renewed. They will walk. They will walk. Huh? Huh? They will mount up with wind like eagle. They will run. They will not be. Huh? They will walk. They will not walk. That's a correct, correct version. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've been talking about it in three days, right? Hallelujah. You got to decide. Everybody say, I will decide. Hey! Everybody say, hey! I want to say one prayer. Father, I have made up my mind to stay where you put me. Say prayer! Say prayer! Say! 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 Say, 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 Roku Sakata Prakasa. I have made up my mind to stay where you put me. My mind is made up. 
Made up my mind, wrong God's way. Yeah, made up my mind, wrong God's way. Made up my mind. Oh, who but then? No longer I'm gonna need you. I made up my mind, go God's way, the rest of my life. I made up my mind, go God's way. Gotta move forward, move, move forward, move by pain. Dragging back, oh no. Goodbye, sorrow, I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind, go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind, go God's way the rest of my life. Hallelujah. Maintaining your reposition. <laughs> they were very afraid tonight because something is about to hit his door. Because we are going to depopulate some of his streak today, we are going to destroy him. We are going to destroy his kingdom tonight again. Another night of bonfire. Everyone under bandage and spell of the enemy in your household today, I set them free in the name of Jesus. Now, go and bring that person close to you right now. I command you to go and bring that person close to you. If in a serious sick bed right now or is crippled, I command in the name of Jesus, rise up from your bed. If his ear is deaf, let him get ear to hear. If his quotum is disabled, I command his quotum to get another new strength. Whatever is happening to your father in a secret eating place right now, I command the hand of God. To go and touch your father and heal him completely. A incessant headache concerning your relative, incessant, incessant headache tonight disappear. What do you do to maintain your position? The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The rise of God does not come dead. Back in the power of God. God love with you. The end of the world. The Lord talk to us about our past.